The end of the world came just as we expected. Someone at the publisher decided we weren't worth the time. We weren't worth the resources to keep this world alive. And so they pulled the plug. And that's how the world ended. Not with a bang, not with a yell, not even with a whimper. It just faded out of existence. And yet, sometimes, there was a yell. There was a bang. There was a veritable explosion of awe. And these are the top 7 MMO world endings. The MMOs that died, but didn't go quietly into the night. They raged and raged until their last breath became a memory that even now haunts the dreams of those who were there. Of those who saw and lived through the end of the world. If you have never experienced the death of an MMO, then you are missing out on a large part of what makes games unique, of what makes games a bridge towards a new kind of interaction, of entertainment, of experience, of art. So I'm gonna try and tell you about some of the games that ended not with just a message that you are disconnected from the server, but with an actual experience, an actual ending. That being said, let's get this started with number 7, Planet Side. This is the latest MMO to be shut down, one that worked tirelessly over the course of 13 years, offering people a glimpse of what could be achieved by combining MMO and first person shooter with squads, with armies. Granted, it never did those things particularly great, mostly because it was made in an era where you couldn't really have an FPS on this scale online because everyone either had dial-up or more likely a potato instead of a modem. Yet it tried and it accomplished something that still has a legacy today. A legacy that ended with an entire planet being bombarded by meteorites. They fell from the sky and just tore up everything and everyone died. How ironic. They've spent all those years, 13 years, fighting for that planet only to have it be destroyed by a predictable cosmic event. Speaking of which, number 6, Ashron Skull Beta Ending. Now I am gonna put a few beta test endings in this list as well, because some of the MMOs that died out didn't really do it in a spectacular fashion or a way that can be considered as, well, being memorable. They just faded. But the beta test of Ashron Skull didn't just fade away, no. It had its own climactic event where a comet hit the planet. Yeah, if you're wondering where they got the idea in Planet Side to do this, and in a lot of other games, Ashron Skull may as well be the culprit. This happened a long, long time ago in the year 1999, and I actually remember reading about it in a local gaming magazine. Back then I didn't have internet, so I couldn't actually participate in the event. Also, the game didn't run on an NES clone from Eastern Europe. Well, actually, I lie. It was from Hong Kong through Eastern Europe. Now, there's not really that much video footage of the event since it happened in 1999, and well, you know, recording software wasn't a thing back then. But there are a few screenshots, very small ones, blurry and not very visible, that show the comet striking the Earth and, well, doing very nasty things to it. And speaking of comets, number 5, Final Fantasy XIV 1. What's Final Fantasy XIV 1, you may ask? Well, here's the thing. Final Fantasy XIV, the one that's currently available, isn't the actual game that was released in the year 2010. No, that game was dreadful, it was horrible. But it did have a kick-ass ending, with an ominous floating sphere red with fire and red floating in the sky, threatening the whole world. But it wasn't actually a comet or, you know, meteor because it's Final Fantasy. It was a Bahamut, one of those really big dragons that basically kill everything and somehow can be summoned 50 times a day. It's like they don't have hobbies or something. Square Enix actually went through the trouble of making a cinematic, a kick-ass cinematic, detailing the final battle to save, well not save, this world was just completely ruined, but a cinematic dedicated to the death and rebirth of this world. And props to them for doing that. Sure, they made a horrible, objectively horrendous game, which caused hundreds of millions of dollars in losses for which they blamed other studios and laid off people in other areas of the world, but not Japan, not the people that made this atrocity of an MMO. Now, I forgot where I was going with this, but basically, at least, even though they were horrible, they gave this crappy-ass game an epic ending. Number 4, The Matrix Online. Now, here's the thing. The Matrix Online Online sort of occupied a strange place. This was a world in a computer that knew it was a world in a computer. That was the Matrix. That's what it was supposed to be. So when it came time to end it, they just started doing weird stuff. Like, weird stuff. They put bleeding eyes in the sky. I've heard players got the abilities of developers and started throwing lightning bolts.
bolts and somehow near the end people turn into cats some of them turn into well some of them look like they were crushed suddenly by the gravity of jupiter and in essence this game ended in a very strange way that's well somewhat better than how the matrix actually ended no one turned into cyber jesus here number three star wars galaxies star wars galaxies was a game that started out as a very unique game and then world of warcraft came along and they changed it because well why wouldn't you betray your player base in order to try and get world of warcraft players in your game and then electronic arts and lucas arts decided that hey maybe even though star wars galaxies wasn't as popular as it used to be it could probably still kick the old republic's ass mostly because it had more content better gameplay and more interesting stuff to do and was actually less of a world of warcraft ripoff so there came a time when this game needed to be shut down but it that came with something different there was no apocalypse there was no end of the world there was no armageddon why would there be this game was set shortly after a new hope there was only one way it could end with that galactic celebration you saw at the end of return of the jedi and yes people did celebrate there were fireworks everywhere and people actually had the ability to finally fly their starships inside the atmosphere of planets on the same maps that people walked on yes ships millennium falcon alikes x-wings y-wings tie fighters they flew everywhere and people cheered and celebrated and danced dancer by the way used to be a class in the game an actual valid occupation it was a weird game and then everything faded to black and john williams started playing and and a couple of years later they rebooted the whole thing with new actors but with the same basic plot number two tabula rasa now this game holds a special place in my heart and this ending holds an even more special place that secret place that no one sees because that's where the darkness also lurks and the madness and the king without eyes that sleeps beyond the veil i was there at the end of tabula rasa now i couldn't record any of it because uh I was running this at about 5 frames a second that night. I could barely get some screenshots, but still it was an amazing experience. The Neth were coming. The armies and legions of the Bane would be upon us. We manned the walls of our fortresses. We fortified our outposts and waited. And then they came. And oh boy did they come. Legions and legions, untold thousands of Bane troops. Giant monstrosities made of metal and flesh. Creatures so vile they made your bones shiver. And leading them, the fallen angels. The Neth. One by one, the continents were abandoned. One by one, the planets fell. Concordia, Arieki, they were all just dust. They herded us like cattle to the last and only place we could go. Earth, home. The first battlefield would become the last. And in that place, an empire crater, at one single outpost, humanity gave its last cry of defiance. There was a bond formed that night. Between the people in that crater, fighting against those endless waves of Neph, of Bane, a bond that will never be broken, a memory that will never be forgotten by all those who stood in Empire Crater when the Neph were beaten back again and again and again, until they decided that if they can't have the Earth, then no one will, and no one did. And now, number one, the Ultima Online Shard Apocalypses. If you want to blame an MMO for there being such a thing as Apocalypse, Armageddons, and world-ending events, then look no further than this one. Ultima Online did this not once, but twice. In the alpha test, there weren't a lot of people, and at the end, they were all gathered in front of the castle with Lord British and Blackthorn, listening to the last speech, waiting for the moment when they would have to log off. And suddenly, Lord British, the bastard, summons a horde of ravenous orcs that begins to murder everyone. And let it not be said that the people who played Ultima Online did not understand the roleplay. Because when other people would scream and yell and would curse, these players would say something like, Why dost thou kill us, my lord? Remaining in character all throughout. Well, someone did yell Jesus, but, well, the avatar is basically that. The players did get their revenge in the beta test. Near the end, British and Blackthorn gave another speech, and someone set Lord British on fire. The devs later retaliated by transforming into demonic monstrosities summoning a bunch more demons and killing everyone on the server everyone now they didn't do this with scripts they didn't do this with some world ending cinematic no they inhabited those creatures and went out to kill other players now that's the kind of world ending event that just gets you right here in that dark place in your soul these people put effort into the world ending well this is one of the first world endings this is the game you have to blame and it's a game that you can 
can still play now, uh, preferably on customized user-made shards because the ones operated by Electronic Arts went a bit um, crazy a couple of years ago. They padded elves and uh, a lot of stuff that's not really that ultima-ish. Still, it's good to see the game keeps going. It just makes you wonder how would a final apocalypse work in it. Well, that's it for the top 7 best MMO world endings. With any luck, the next time your favorite MMO goes out, you'll get the chance to make some wonderful memories. And not just tragic ones that you recall in your darkest moments of gunfire, exploding rockets, Bane craft approaching the tripods, and the laugh. The sinister laugh of the Neff. If you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it.